So you've got a Microsoft Surface Pro 2 that you found and you wanna get rid of Windows 8.1. Who wouldn't? What can you upgrade it with and can you put Linux on it? Stick around and find out. Yes, it's a Surface Pro 2. It's got a i5 or 4300U, 8 gigs of RAM, and a 256 gigabyte drive, which is pretty crazy for 2013. Yeah, and for being 2013, this thing does do well. And it kind of comes back to like, I've said for a long time that Moore's Law is dead. You can get a laptop that's 10, 15 years old now. They're plenty good. There's no reason to have a laptop that's one year old or brand new, you know? One of the things is Windows 8 runs actually pretty decent on this, yeah. but it's trash. I cannot stand it. And so that's why we're gonna put, what is this, Fedora Linux? We're gonna do Fedora and we're, we chose Fedora because this is integrated graphics. So we're not having to deal with Nvidia drivers or anything like that, which Fedora does have a little bit of a hard time with. But the biggest reason why we chose Fedora over Ubuntu, Ubuntu tends to take GNOME, the GNOME desktop environment and Ubuntu eyes it if you will. It's more desktop oriented, whereas GNOME on its own does a really great job of being touch friendly. I mean, without further ado, let's get this thing imaged. Let's get it, give it a shot. It has one USB. Oh, it's one USB port? Yes. Well, for surfaces, it's basically a process where you hold down the volume up and you either restart it up or restart the computer. Side note here, you need to disable the trusted platform module and secure boot to get it to boot up. I don't know why. You can re-enable them after you're done, but we couldn't get it to boot unless those were disabled. Gotta go. Hey! Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so we had okay, so we had to turn off. Secure. So it was secure boot. Okay, what do we do? Start Fedora Live. Start Fedora Live. Yep. It's sort of funny to be like, error. Cannot install this device. All right. So touch screen's working. Okay. So, so we just yep. Install Fedora. All right. Continue. Fedora uses the Anaconda installer, if I recall correctly. That one. Fact check. All right. Um. Yes. Do that, and then just hit done. Delete all. Goodbye, Windows key. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be USB 2.0. I tell you though, even 2013, and being this is such a premium device, you would think that they would try to have it be USB 3.0. Uh, that's true, but like, I mean what, this has a micro SD card, charging port, uh, 3.5 mm, or not 3.5, yeah, it does have a 3.5 millimeter and a USB, that's all the I.O. you get. So it finally installed, it only took 30 milliseconds. So we're gonna finish installation. Legitimately though, it did take about, what was that, probably 15 minutes or so. Yeah, it's um, USB 2, I it's, assume. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not too long of a process, but. All right, so what we're gonna do is go ahead and uh, up in the top right corner is your dash, okay. and go ahead and hit the power button, okay. and then do restart. All righty. Uh, we'll hold off pulling out the installation medium. Now on Ubuntu, I, I do know that Ubuntu will actually prompt you to remove the installation medium after the install. This might not need to. All right, so first time set up, let's go ahead and yep, connect to your Wi-Fi. Recognize the Wi-Fi drivers and everything, that's good. So now with connecting your online accounts, uh, I think you freaked it out. I think you try and get it to do too many things. Um, but no, with online accounts, you connect Google, Nextcloud, whatever you wanna do. Now what's interesting is it's not showing, there it goes, okay. Uh, no thanks, we won't do the tour. I don't know why it was taking a second to load everything. But man, that is pretty responsive. So this is a 2013 laptop. Mm -hmm. And this thing is just flying. I mean, Firefox opened pretty quick. So yeah, let's see what kind of Wi-Fi driver's got. In yeah, the he's got he's got um, fiber internet. Ugh. <laughs> Ooh, so it may have good speeds hardware-wise, but... Yeah. I mean, this is usable, but with gigabit internet... Yeah. Now it does recognize your Bluetooth, it looks like. Um, do you have any Bluetooth devices you wanna to try to connect to it? Uh, At home sound blast, there we go. Hey, isn't that Apple noises? Are they? That's Apple. Uh, we'll unplug this and... All right, so screen rotation. So screen rotation, we can't quite figure out. Yeah. I don't know if the Surface 2 even had screen rotation, but it does look like it may have. Oh, interesting. Ah, so the Microsoft logo will bring up your window spread. Oh, look at that. Oh, geez. It's a little bit laggy. Oh, there we go. But hey, that's... Okay, so it just took a second to boot up. That's not bad. That really isn't bad. It's a little sluggish, 
But overall, it's not, like this is totally usable. Yeah, the, the sluggishness too only seems to be like in the initial loading of an application and then suddenly it's, it's zippy. Right, we'll just test a little quickie little YouTube video here. I'm gonna say that part of this might be due to the fact that it's only pulling 30 megabits. Cause like- For internet speed? Yes. Yeah, not, it's still not too bad though. I mean, we are we are in 1080p. Yeah, yeah. auto 1080p, and this is not like if I skip over here. I mean, I mean, for the fact that you have fiber, that kind of sucks. But it's back at 1080p again, so it's it's sluggish, but it's totally usable. Now going into touchscreen, so this is something that GNOME does very well. So like as you can see, we've lost our pointer. We've lost our, our mouse pointer and everything, and we're touching everything. I mean, it just works so freaking well. Mm -hmm. um, we got our window spread. Now here, this is something I really love about the GNOME interface with touchscreens, is now we can open up another one, so like say our clock, okay? And now if we click this, now it spreads the windows. Let's just do a reboot before we update. Okay. Oh, there's plenty of updates. That's, that's probably not helping things right now. So overall, what do you think of your new device, Jack? I think it's pretty great, honestly. I mean, this is just gonna be perfect to take along if I need to show something. I mean, also I realize it's got a camera back there if I wanna take some sweet videos, which yeah, yeah, not yeah. that you would ever do that with this, but I know the cameras do work. Only thing we haven't gotten working is the automatic screen rotation, mm -hmm. but it's definitely possible in services. We just haven't figured out how to do it for this one. We've also tested Bluetooth works, Wi-Fi works, Firefox works well. Brightness of the keyboard keys, those work well. So it's um, automatic. The mute button and everything. I mean, it all seems to work except for screen rotation. So that's a little bit frustrating. It's honestly great. And if you have an old Surface like this and you wanna revive it, the one thing to note is that I believe after the Pro 4 or the fourth generation of Surfaces, you need a special Linux distro. Uh, before that though, I think you can basically put whatever you want on yeah, there. Yeah, they, they went into a couple of like proprietary like uh, screen drivers and stuff like that. So you can find distros that have all that pre-installed for you. Um, for, you said four past? Yeah, past the fourth right. generation, but pre-fourth gen, you don't have to worry about that as far as I know. If you happen to have a Surface Pro 2 or something like this yourself and you figured out the auto rotation issue, let us know down in the comments. Yeah, we're definitely trying to respond to every comment that we can. We want to build like an old school YouTube tech community and everything like that here on No Plan, which is something we personally miss out of a lot of channels these days. Right. So make sure that you join the No Plan community and start commenting down below and subscribe and stay up to date with No Plan. Yeah, we'll catch you next time.